Welcome back to my video tutorial on development of urinary system. Here comes part 2 development of urinary bladder. By the end of fourth week of development, the caudal end of primitive gut tube known as hind gut, it shows a ventral diverticulum which projects into the umbilical cord known as allantoic diverticulum. The part of hind gut distal to the allantoic diverticulum starts dilating known as endodermal cloaca from which urinary bladder develops. Let's see the changes happening around the endodermal cloaca. Its caudal end is closed by a bilaminar membrane known as cloacal membrane which is composed of outer ectoderm and inner endodermal layers. Meanwhile, the mesodermal cells from the primitive streak at the caudal surface of ectoderm starts migrating towards the cloacal membrane around the tail end of the embryo. Here is the ventral view of cloacal membrane which is covered by ectodermal layer. The migrating mesodermal cells form raised margins on either side of cloacal membrane known as urogenital or genital folds. Lateral to them, they raise the ectoderm to form larger swellings known as genital swellings. Further, the mesodermal cells migrate towards the cephalic end of the cloacal membrane to form a tubercle known as genital tubercle. Here is the endodermal cloaca. Here is the cloacal membrane and here is the genital tubercle on the ventral aspect of tail end of the embryo. The mesodermal cells from primitive streak continue to migrate around the tail end of the embryo more ventrally and cephalic to genital tubercle towards the umbilical cord to form infraumbilical part of the abdominal wall. As a result, length of the anterior abdominal wall increases so that the cloacal membrane shifts from ventral to caudal aspect of the cloaca where it lies at the bottom of the cloaca. Meanwhile, a surface depression is formed over the ectoderm of the cloacal membrane known as ectodermal cloaca. Here is the endodermal cloaca with its allantoic diverticulum. Here is the cloacal membrane with its surface depression ectodermal cloaca. At this stage, a coronally oriented mesodermal septum is formed between the hindgut and allantoic diverticulum known as urorectal septum. It grows more caudally to meet with the cloacal membrane and divides the endodermal cloaca into ventral and dorsal parts. The ventral part is known as primitive urogenital sinus whereas the dorsal part is known as primitive anorectal canal. Let's learn few facts about urorectal septum. It is composed of three folds. One vertical fold from above and two lateral folds on either side of endodermal cloaca. The vertical fold is also known as tonics fold. It is derived from the caudal migration of mesodermal cells from infraumbilical part of abdominal wall between hindgut and allantoic diverticulum. Whereas the two lateral folds are also known as Rathke's folds. They are derived from growing paramesonephric and mesonephric ducts on either side of endodermal cloaca, out of which paramesonephric ducts lie more medially. The three folds meet with each other in a coronal plane to form urorectal septum, which grows more caudally to meet with cloacal membrane. Before it meets with the cloacal membrane, there lies a gap between the caudal free edge of urorectal septum and cloacal membrane known as cloacal duct. Fusion of urorectal septum with cloacal membrane continues till the 7th week of development during which the septum divides the endodermal cloaca into ventral urogenital sinus and dorsal anorectal canal. Simultaneously, it also divides the cloacal membrane into urogenital membrane in front and anal membrane behind. The point where the septum meets with the cloacal membrane remains as perineal body. While the urorectal septum is developing, mesonephric ducts within the lateral folds of the septum 
grow ventrally and open into urogenital sinus through its dorsal wall so that the urogenital sinus is divided into two parts cephalic vesicourethral part and caudal definitive urogenital sinus in later stages the definitive urogenital sinus further divides into two parts upper pelvic part and lower phallic part the point to be understood here is by the end of fifth week of development urogenital sinus shows three parts from cephalic to caudal they are vesicourethral part pelvic part and phallic part here is the mesonephric duct opening into urogenital sinus the caudal part of mesonephric duct between the ureteric bud and urogenital sinus is known as common excretory duct at this stage it starts blending with the dorsal wall of vesicourethral part of the urogenital sinus after forming s shaped loop the point to be noted here is mesodermal cells from the mesonephric duct proliferate to form the mucous membrane of internal trigone of the urinary bladder here is the dorsal view of vesicourethral part of urogenital sinus showing mesonephric ducts here here are the ureteric buds and here are the common excretory ducts which are blending with the dorsal wall of vesicourethral part forming mucous membrane of internal trigone of developing urinary bladder while doing so ureteric buds get disconnected from the mesonephric ducts migrate more laterally and open directly into the vesicourethral part at superior lateral angles of internal trigone in males mesonephric ducts grow more caudally open into the pelvic part of urogenital sinus through its dorsal wall as ejaculatory ducts now let's summarize the development of urinary bladder its mucous membrane except for the internal trigone develops from endoderm of vesicourethral part of urogenital sinus whereas mucosa of internal trigone develops from mesoderm of caudal parts of mesonephric ducts which extends into the ureters in the form of trigonal muscle of ureters apex of the bladder develops from endoderm of proximal part of allantoic diverticulum as it opens into the vesicourethral part the distal part of the diverticulum towards the umbilicus known as uracus which remains after birth as median umbilical ligament the musculature and the tissues forming the wall of urinary bladder develops from splanchnoploric layer of lateral plate mesoderm let's see few congenital anomalies of urinary bladder failure of fusion of urorectal septum with cloacal membrane leads to undivided cloaca where the cloacal duct remains patent with imperforate anus so that urogenital and alimentary systems open to the exterior through a common orifice in males abnormal communication may develop between the rectum and urinary bladder known as rectovesical fistula similarly in females utero vesical and vesico vaginal fistulae may develop persistency of uracus after birth connecting the apex of urinary bladder to umbilicus forming uracal fistula which may leads to leakage of urine at umbilicus a portion of uracus may be patent within the median umbilical ligament forming uracal cyst Failure of formation of infraumbilical part of anterior abdominal wall leads to exposure of the urinary bladder known as ectopia vesicae Here is the end of part 2 where we have learned the development of urinary bladder Thank you for your patient listening keep learning